huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. This is your host, Ken Lane, talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And this has been some freakish weather, oh my gosh. All this week, I barely, let's see, early in the week it was 18 degrees. In the morning, it was chilly. I had to go down to Phoenix on Tuesday and it was just bitter cold. Later in the week, it's this is like the last half of this week has been glorious. Didn't even need a jacket through the day. It's beautiful. It is starting to confuse some of your plants. We need it to get cold. We, we truly want it. Your plants want to be cold. They want to be dormant. They don't want to wake up. And so I'm seeing here at the garden center, things are blooming already. So I've got pincushion flower. I threw that on our uh, um, Instagram page. Because it was just so pretty. They're starting to elongate. This is a perennial flower. So it started to elongate, come out, out of its roots, started to hover about, I don't know, six, eight inches above the foliage, and started to bloom. Yuccas. I've got some brake light yuccas that came in. This is a miniature or dwarf variety of the red yuccas. So s- some of the yuccas get quite large. They'll get as hip high or so. This one stays cute. It's, it's, it's short, maybe knee high, or even lower than knee high. But the brake light, the, the flower color is a bright, bright red, like a brake light, thus the name. Most yuccas, the red yuccas or yellow yuccas, are more salmon-y, light muted reds or yellows, but have a pure red like that, very unusual. And it grows better in containers. Well, they started to bloom. They're sending up flowers. It's so warm. They're going, it's spring. Let's do this thing. Let's go. They want it to go. And some going, whoa, whoa, hold on, boys. Let's, 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 let's wait for a moment. Now, if it does get cold, and it will, we'll get another snow. There'll be more frost. Uh, we, we need it. We need all those things. Your plants need that. That'll slow them down. If it really gets cold, yes, it might take that flower from the pincushion flower. It might take that flower from, let's say, a yucca, but it was starting to send off more buds. So it'll just, these things repeat bloom throughout the spring and summer season. It's just starting early. And so we need it to be chilled. Now, it looks like a little tiny front might be coming through. I, I can't. I can't figure out if it's a heavy, lots of snow, lots of rain, or none. I hope it's a, oh, I hope we get buried. It'd be great to have some real serious snow, you know, six inches, and just let it slowly melt and percolate through the forest, through your through your root ball. Your plants, they need hydration through the winter. That's why we tell folks, water twice a month, your entire landscape. Because we're so inconsistent in the mountains of Arizona with our moisture. And so if we get a good rain or good snow, I'm talking at least six inches or at least an inch of rain, you could cut some of that back, but you need at least an inch. So the math is one inch of rain when you turn it into snow is about six inches of snow. It's about the same amount of moisture uh, when it hits the, the gardens or your, your landscape or the forest. So you need about that much per month at least if not twice a month. And so this is one, if we, if you know it's going to get really cold, like it was 18 degrees, at least at, at the Lane House uh, earlier this week, that if, if a plant is very dry and you go to it down the teens, it can actually damage the, the outer tips of those shrubs, trees. And so you can sacrifice some of your leaf buds because it just got damaged. So it's important. Uh, but it's... I'll, I'm loving the weather. It's beautiful, but I'm hoping for some uh, storm system to come through. We need this high this high pressure system to kind of float off so we can get some, some storms in here. We need some moisture. Uh, we need to fill up Lake Powell. We need to have ski slopes filled with snow up in, in uh, Pine Top Lakeside, the, the, the Sunrise and, and Flagstaff ski resorts. We need that. And so it's better for the long term of the health of the plants. So uh, in my yard, I'm seeing bud swell, so you're seeing that the plants are actually, my maples are actually sapping some. You're seeing the, they've woken up. The sap is now flowing up and down the branch. And so you'll see if it starts to weep a little bit, that's okay. 
don't lose your head. Many times that's called sun scald. That's a very common problem here because plants will start to wake up. The sap will start to flow, especially on the south side of the tree. And then that night, it'll go down to 18 degrees. So that, that sap freezes. And so as, as moisture, things that are humid or water, starts to freeze, it expands. And so what you'll see on the south side of some trees, especially fruit trees or shade trees, mainly those, you'll see the south side, there'll be a crack that starts from the ground and it goes up to the lower branches typically. Uh, it's called sun scald. It usually happens on younger trees, let's say under five years old. They've been in the landscape for less than five years. You can you are at risk when the weather is like this of sun scald. There's nothing you can really do for it once the damage happens. Sun scald is the reason that they paint fruit trees white. That trunk, you'll see some trees, the, the lower half of that trunk is painted white. That is specifically to reflect sun so the sap will stay warmer, or will stay cooler, excuse me. If it warms up, you've got a dark uh, colored bark, it warms up faster and so the sap starts flowing and then it freezes that night and you get the sun scald. Something to watch. If you already have cracking going up and down the tree, the only thing you can really do is encourage that plant to grow out of it. And so you're setting the stage right now. So I just helped a, a couple folks this week. They had sun scald. It was forming from all this warm weather and then cold nights. So I said, here's what to do. Fertilize it. That's your, The damage is already done. It won't kill the plant Watch for insects that could be getting into that sap. You can have problems that, but there's no real insects out yet. They, they'll start coming out the end of February, first part of March, depending on your elevation. So it's still pretty chilly out. And so they're, they're hibernating. They can be attracted to that sap short term. Here's, here's what you're doing right away. Fertilize it. What you want to do is that next ring tree ring of or wood growth coming up in a tree it's going to form that this spring it'll happen here very shortly um, you want to encourage that to grow as large a ring as you possibly can two things create tree rings food and water so fertilize it now so these folks i said hey, it was a maple it's young you need to grow grow out of this fertilize it with the 744 all-purpose plant food the main ingredient in that is cottonseed meal, which really increase, encourages uh, additional wood formation. Uh, this has got some bird guano and some sulfur. It's got all kinds. Of, it's a good mix for local landscapes, northern Arizona landscapes. I said, do it now in January. Do it again the end of March. That way, when that thing flushes out with new leaf growth, new foliage, it will maximize its leaf surface area or photosynthesis which will help create more foliage. anyway it just helps a plant so i won't go into the botany of plants and why they do all they do but you want to increase that ring and then eventually it will actually grow over that crack and you'll never know that it was damaged it had sun scald so that's something to watch it's unique to areas higher elevations the mountains mountain gardening it's it's unique to us where we warm up during the day and then get these huge temperature swings and it gets really cold again at night and then water 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 another thing i'm doing in my yard because this weather if we get this storm system coming through you're going to see the gardens are going to wake up the weeds they're going to start growing uh, the cool season crops they're going to start coming up uh, your your crocus daffodils they'll start to, to elongate or come out of the ground it will wake things up your mums and asters will start to emerge from the ground I'm really worried about my weeds. I've got these new patches of gardens where it's, it's freshly laid rock. It's got fresh new you know plants in there. And the last thing I want are weeds coming up in, in that area. So I, I did actually am spreading weed and grass stopper. Uh, there's, there's different, there's, it's like a fertilizer. You spread it in your hand spreader. You just sling it around the yard. Pray for rain. It'd be perfect if we can get it in before this next uh, storm system. Whoa, that'd be like the magic. That would really cut down on the amount of work you're going to have in the gardens for the next 
four, five, six months. It just gets rid of all of those weed seeds so they don't even germinate and come up in your gardens. But put that stuff down now. If you've got sun scald, uh, uh, you've got sap flowing, put it fertilize. Those are two bits of advice I can give you right now that make a difference like this week. We'll be right back. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Not everyone can grow wildflowers, but we'll make sure you're not one of them. At Waters, we know which wildflowers sprout, thrive, and bloom with success. We're wild about wildflowers with many of our own Arizona blends. Like our Arizona native mix, butterfly and hummingbird mixes, and all are big, bold, and beautiful. At Waters, we know wildflowers, and winter's a season to spread new seed. Waters Garden Center, where people who love their flowers wild, they love to shop for seed. My living room feels so empty. Now that the Christmas tree is gone, the house just seems so blah. Brighten it up with a big, bold, beautiful plant from Waters Garden Center. Fill that cavernous space with tall tropicals, colossal cactus, and sizable succulents that bring the great outdoors indoors. Make a gorgeous green space you can enjoy all year, not just for a season. Unique, exclusive, one-of-a-kind houseplants found only at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. And welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. This is your host, Ken Lane, with his favorite gal, Lisa Waters Lane. She's been gardening her entire life, which is short, brief, and beautiful. (laughs) You little youngster, how's your uh, New Year's resolutions going? Pretty good so far. Really? Yeah. Name one. Well, that's too personal. Pet pet my dog a little bit longer. (laughs) Take an extra 30 minutes per day to pet a schnauzer. Ah, well, yes. They deserve it. And I Uh, deserve it. Dry January is going pretty well for both of us. (laughs) See, I wasn't going to say that. (laughs) (laughs) We have to meet. We have to admit to folks. We drink sometimes. (laughs) But not in January. So it's kind of a discipline. It's kind of a, can you do it? It's kind of like a, I don't know, like a fast. So, in fact, I found my, myself the other day, kind of had a little craving, not really, but uh, going, oh, oh, I'll use this time to pray. Kind of a reminder going, you know, true fast, biblical fast kind of thing. Or mm-hmm. there's several. Anyway, that's too personal. But anyway, that that's, it's going up good. I don't have, okay. I think I feel better. I, I feel good. I don't miss it too much. I think I might be uh, losing poundage. I don't know about that. <laughs> no, not, not at all. It didn't help at all. Uh, I need that resolution to kind of. Maybe, kinda... maybe by the end of the month. We'll report again at the end of the month. <laughs> maybe we won't. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is a garden segment. So we're talking about so uh, our gardening. Okay. I noticed that the uh, Scotty, we've got a Scotty at home, uh, mm-hmm. a, a puppy, eight maybe months. six months, seven no, months old. She's about eight months. Eight months old. Anyway, found the the love of of. Digging holes. That's a Scotty. That's a Scotty. They like to yeah. dig. So we've had Scotties before. They love mm-hmm. going out. They love going with you and gardening. They like mm-hmm. planting bulbs and flowers. I'd planted some some pansies, oh, maybe a month ago. <laughs> and they were looking pretty good. The snow had kind of was beating them up a little bit. And the yeah. Scotty went, you know what? I think I'll jump up here in this I'll help you. ginormous pot. And I'll just like... <laughs> throw these things all over the patio and so now it's just a mess so uh, and now they're in the raised beds so that's a puppy phase eventually tilly tilly will get out of it that's our dog's name so (laughs) just puppy and as soon as it warms up and it thaws we'll be able to garden because scotties are the best garden dogs they are ever they They love hanging out there with you Mm -hmm. so we'll kind of hang and trim we've been trimming pruning stuff already Uh so she likes that sure so anyway yes what about gardening for you what what kind of (laughs) this is a q a thing what are what are people asking three minutes in we still haven't covered the question (laughs) but yes we can do that speaking of pruning there's actually a lot of pruning questions so um tom moved into a home in chino that has several mature apple trees uh cherry trees Sort of bit of trees. He wants to know when he should start pruning those. And then also, what else should he should be doing for those fruit trees right now, preparing for spring? So you've got now, Tom, you've got about six weeks. This is Chino Valley. Any of the, Anyone in the Central Highlands from 
Sedona, Camp Verde, Cottonwood to, you know, Paulden, Chino Valley, Skull Valley, Kirkland, Prescott Valley, Dewey, Humboldt, oh, the whole area, whole Central Island, uh, Central Island. Uh, we, we've got a lot of fruit trees here. So apples, pears, cherries, apricots, nectarines, mm -hmm. you can go on and on. There's a lot of them. Uh, now through March is when we prune things. And so take your time, get a nice day and just go knock it out. Get all those dead branches out of there. Anything that cr grows to the middle, crossing branches, things that rub. You know, there's there's some handouts on that. And I'll be writing a few garden columns on that here shortly. So uh, follow us. You'll be able to get that, Tom. But but you, you prune, finish pruning now all of your fruit trees, all of them. Uh, there's different techniques for each one. There's not enough time for that. There's encyclopedias. I've got that's one. Follow us on on Facebook or Instagram or or, or newsletter, mm -hmm. and you'll be an expert by the time you get through March. Because I've got two or three uh, how to prune berries, how to prune fruit trees. Anyway, don't we do a garden uh, class? We do a garden class on that. Um, so j prune. When you're done pruning, you spray everything in the yard really but especially focus on fruit trees because because you enjoy fruits and so do bugs and disease and deer and everything enjoys fruit trees because they're so sweet and delicious mm -hmm. and they're just my mouth's just watering thinking about an <laughs> apple uh, so anyway that that's you spray it with a uh, horticultural oil mm -hmm. it's a heavy grade oil that coats the trunk coats the eggs that were laid down in the crevices of the trunk and the crotches up in the branches. You're, you're hosing that entire thing down from a couple directions with a hose in sprayer. I mean, this is quantity more than quality. Just get that oil up there. It will coat the eggs and suffocate them. Mm -hmm. Any, there are bugs wintering over at the base of your tree up in the, up in the trunk. You don't see them, yeah. but they're there mm -hmm. and they're waiting to come out till that tree blossoms and to start munching on your apple tree. Spray it with horticultural oil. Get rid of it. Right after that, you fertilize. So do all of this. It doesn't matter the sequence, really. Just just prune, spray with horticultural oil, and put a fruit tree food down. And you're set. And then you know, wait for spring to come. Mm -hmm. So things will start blooming. You know, typically April. April through May is when when fruit trees bloom. Right. It starts with apricots, then nectarines, <clears throat> and it's just a series of of blossoms that happen. And it feels like it's going to be a good year. So the bo the buds are big yeah. on the on the trees, on, on the maples, on the aspens. Mm -hmm. Things are looking like they're plump and happy and they want to grow. Right. And I just want to say the horticultural oil is a organic oil. Oh, actually, yeah. it's, a, it's not toxic right. to us or right. other critters in the yard. Just right. those bugs that we don't want. Just the bugs. It's probably <laughs> the safest... Now, there are different kinds of oils. There are petroleum-based oils, so, so mm -hmm. uh, like oily-based oils. I would say don't use those. I mean, they'll, they'll, you'll save a couple dollars by buying one of those, but it's not organic. It's right. it's it's not as good. It's going to hurt your birds and the, the dogs and yourself. You can go with organic oils that are super safe, mm -hmm. it's, and they're not, they aren't that expensive. Right. They go a long way. So I think it's a couple tablespoons to a mm -hmm. gallon of water so it goes a long ways right and good advice and the other thing is yes yeah, spray your fruit trees but even your evergreens oh yeah uh you can yeah. spray those as well everything in the spray air. everything when you've got that tool out so get a good hose in sprayer mm -hmm. this is where a good tool you'll you'll pay a little bit more for a really good tool but it'll, you'll use it for decades right. and it makes the job super easy mm -hmm. just pour this stuff pour the oil in the in the hopper connect a hose and spray the whole yard, evergreens, roses, mm -hmm. anywhere where you had a disease. Uh, oils actually will coat spores of, of powdery mildew and leaf spot. And there's a lot of benefits with it, not just insects. But Tom's question was fruit trees specifically right. in Chino Valley. Yep. That's what you do, Tom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Next question concerns pruning as well. But this one is more about pruning a large blue spruce. So Shelby okay. has a large blue spruce, mature, yeah. encroaching on a driveway. Yeah, it's classic. So um, mm. needs to prune it, wants to know when's the best time to do that. Yeah. So so now's the time. So winter. So the new year kind of marks the start of pruning season. And typically you have until the everything wakes up in spring, which is the end of March. Mm -hmm. So you have until spring, which is March 21st or whatever. So to so feel some urgency, but that's free, that's a few weeks away. So right. you've got some time. Just pick a nice day. But you'll cut back those lower branches on a spruce. 
And hopefully it's not encroaching too much because yeah. if you prune them up too high, you look funny. A spruce can look Dr. Yeah. Seuss's, you know, yeah. Susi, whatever that Ugly. word is, makeup words <laughs> on the airwaves, just spew them out there. It'll look like a Dr. Seuss garden. Uh, yeah. But but a few, few limbs. Right. I like spruce and, and evergreens pruned up a limb or two because it makes it easier to clean out from underneath them. Your quail and your birds won't be happy because they love to spend time underneath. That's protection. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But it's, it's you got to park your car. That's that true. big old 350 uh, out there in the driveway. <laughs> you know, Dually, I can just see her now. <laughs> <laughs> You cowgirls. There you go. <laughs> well, I do have another question, but I think it's going to... Hey, if you did it really quick, maybe. Okay. Wants to put in a 200 square foot wildflower garden. Yeah. Wants to know, <laughs> what does she need to know? Oh, uh, <laughs> in 15 <laughs> seconds or less, they come in, we've got a handout. We make our own wildflower seed. Mm -hmm. There's different qualities. This right. is one where you want good quality wildflower seeds because that means difference. perennials. Mm -hmm. So they'll come back every year. So you do it once and you're done for years. But come in and talk to us sidebar here at the Garden Center. We're coming, we have a class at the end of this this month mm -hmm. called Why January is the month, best month to plant wildflowers. Come and see us. Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners, will be right back right okay. after this. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Stress melts away with water's finest quality plants curated for a better night's sleep. Imagine a five-star sleep experience waiting for you every night at home. Bask in the comfort of these plants as they absorb harmful chemicals and pollen. Purifying bedroom air, creating your own living oxygen tent, as refreshing as a forest rain. A good night's rest starts at Waters Garden Center. Natural, safe, organic. Waters Garden Center in Prescott, also found on the web at top10houseplants.com. We believe retirement means more time to garden and plants make you happier at Waters Garden Center. Hi, Ken here with the finds of the week and our Deodore Cedars. A standalone tree so beautifully shaped it's referred to as the Christmas tree. Fastest growing of the evergreen trees used for quick screens, windbreaks, and privacy. Graceful arches sweep through the landscape in colors of blue to green from the stately tree. An evergreen lover's dream for fast, thick growth. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. For people who love majestic evergreens, they love to shop. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. Something else I noticed at least inside with my house plants. Uh, the days are short. The, the the sun angle is pretty low. Some of the plants that were further into the living room, uh, TV rooms, uh, it's a little dark right now. And so especially taller cacti, euphorbias, aloes, uh, ZZ plants, they'll start to stretch and start to lean. They'll start growing towards the light. I just need more light. Please help me. And so I rolled a couple house plants, just moved them close to the window. I said, "Don't struggle. I'm here for you. My name's I'm your gardener. I'm your I'm your plant father. Here, let me help you out." And so you just move the pot a little bit for for a couple weeks. You know, take in the sun and just kind of go, "Oh, thanks so much." And so you can do it, it just because a house plant's in your house doesn't mean you have to stay right there. They're in containers. You can move them about a little bit if they're starting to stretch a little bit. Um, Maybe give them just a touch more light. Put a light bulb next to them, full spectrum. Uh, um, the day is going to be, be longer pretty quickly, but that's still six weeks. You know, March, the days are pretty long at that point. Uh, that's a little that's a little long for some things. So the ZZ plant, one of them had a real long uh, stem coming out. I just went, okay, that's enough. And I snipped it off going, you're taking up too much real estate. Let's get it back together here. And so it'll, it'll encourage some new growth coming out of the middle. Uh, and then gave it just a little bit more light. And so this is when plants start to struggle because the days are just so short right now. At least you're indoor plants. Outdoor plants, 
they're in hibernation mode. The sap is moving in those plants outdoors. Your your evergreens, the spruce and the pine, the firs, the cypress, the you're seeing buds, little candle buttons on the end of the end of the branches. They're swelling, they're getting larger. That's why if you didn't fertilize last October, November sometime, you really should fertilize them right now. It'll take that food, and those plants are still growing. Uh, what, the, what you see, that growth on top with the branches, the new leaf buds, flower buds, and that's also happening down below on the roots. If you fertilize some, it'll like they can take in more of those nutrients, and so you get more of that top growth, especially if you bought a house that maybe wasn't taken care of the last decade or so and you're still trying to clean things up if you're if you're trimming things up you're trying to get things remodel getting ready for remodels um, fertilize after you're done pruning and that'll help that plant to fill out so a, a wispy pinion pine tree it just hasn't been cared for in years and you're trying to tr get all the dead wood out if you fertilize it right after you're done even even now uh, it will really be a game changer for next spring's growth when it when it elongates and has those new new candle growth, new needles, new leaves, whatever that thing is you're you're planting or you're you're trimming, it will benefit from that. And so the product, the fertilizer I recommend is a 744 all-purpose plant food. Now that that food I made oh, two decades ago. It is like magic for, for evergreens, natives. It's got cottonseed meal as the, as the main ingredient in that. And it, it really makes things green up, flower, more fragrant. And then we bump some sulfur in there so it makes it more acidic. It just brings out the most of those landscapes. But if you did fertilize last fall, it is important. Get it. It's setting flowers now. Help it set better flowers. Then indoors... I would say my house plants. There, we've got quite a few rooms, lots of plants. We love we love plants. Obviously, we own a garden center. We love plants. We like talking about plants. We do an hour program every every weekend just on plants. But some of the house plants are stretching, get a little yellow. Uh, you could tell the daylight. The short day parts are, are just hard on them. So if you could big plants, I have them on casters. I just roll them over. Going here, have some more light. I'm here for you. Uh, and then a fertilizer for them. If you're an indoor houseplant, if you want the best plant food ever. Um, I made this composted tea for transplant shock out in the yard. It's mainly if you're planting a new tree, a new shrub, and more vegetables out in the yard. It's an organic tea, composted tea. It's, it looks like brown syrup. looks like maple syrup or something, only richer and thicker. It's got, a, it's got a nutrient factor to it that is like magic for houseplants. It's liquid. You know, it's like a, two tablespoons in a gallon. It's pretty easy to use. But boy, have the houseplants ever responded to that, especially your leafy, greeny ones, so your pothos and philodendrons, euphorbias, the cacti, the aloes. They really respond to that. If you're doing blooming things, I've got a better better food for blooming things called flower power of all things but the houseplant variety that's called root and grow again i made it the titles for outdoors transplant shock and it works great for that but it really works well for an organic fertilizer for seed starts uh indoor houseplants oh it's just again steeped uh, tea we just make this tea out of it that makes it concentrate and now it becomes a fertilizer great stuff uh, we always have some on the shelf, but it works on my house plants and outdoors as well. Hey, we got a lot more in store for you. We got Lisa coming up with her tidbits right up to this. We're right back. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Hi, Lisa here with the Plants of the Week and our Arizona Gold Euonymus. An excellent choice for colored hedges and as tough as they come. This evergreen displays bold gold, head-high foliage that grows even thicker when sheared. A single shrub makes a bold statement for just $27, but in rows they make excellent visual and sound barriers. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love bold gold hedges, they love to shop. We believe in family, church, community, and friendships here at Waters Garden Center. 
My living room feels so empty. Now that the Christmas tree is gone, the house just seems so blah. Brighten it up with a big, bold, beautiful plant from Waters Garden Center. Fill that cavernous space with tall tropicals, colossal cactus, and sizable succulents that bring the great outdoors indoors. Make a gorgeous green space you can enjoy all year, not just for a season. Unique, exclusive, one-of-a-kind houseplants found only at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. This is your host, Ken Lane, and my, not my lovely assistant, my beautiful wife, Oh. Business partner. Ooh, I like that uh, introduction much better. Thank really? You. What's your favorite? What's your? What's the best intro I could give you? Go. Uh, no, <laughs> that was good. I don't like assistant, but I like partner. Okay. I like helper. I like uh, partner. Helper. Partner. Yeah. Yep. All those are good. So, yeah. but this segment's not about me and with a partner. Oh, honey, this is about, about you, you and your partner. So <laughs> it's all about you're, you. You're all inspiring the time. us on, on your <laughs> segment. So we wanted, so we have an hour program. Mm-hmm. We've been doing this for decades and it gets boring. It's like every other program. Old guy is up there talking about his expertise, plumbers, politicians, you name it, birders. It doesn't matter what it is. Monotone, same stuff over and over. Going, that's boring. We need to break this up. How do I do that? The smartest gardener I know is my wife. Why not have give her a segment so it breaks it up so it's not just me. It's not just monotone. Now it's some some now it's you. something else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. We're not sure why. And it's work. This is people. This is people's favorite segment. People this one do in the Q&A. enjoy it. They yeah. Enjoy it. It's funny. It's weird to have people recognize my voice. <laughs> They're like, I think I know you. And I'm like, uh. <laughs> I was down at Certified Transmission the other day. He was doing some work for us. That's our Mike and his team have been part of our, they've been forever. taking care of our fleet forever. And uh, I'm in the lobby talking to Paul is there his GM and, and uh, someone sitting there in the lobby goes, are you Ken Lane? I'm going, uh, <laughs> have we met? What, what? Oh, I know that voice. I'm going, okay, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Very kind. Yeah. Just kind of, you never know oh, no. where it's going to show it's up. Always, always <laughs> yeah. people have nice comments. Very much. Yeah. Yes. And if you don't have nice comments, talk to me that. so I can turn around and show you my. Yeah. Don't talk to yeah. me. Yeah. I'm <laughs> sensitive. I'll start crying. <laughs> it won't be pretty. So. Yeah. <laughs> so what do we got this week? What's what's going on in the gardens? Well, it's still January. Right. So what we have is people who are dreaming of spring. So lots of people in, yeah. A lot of people going, I just had to come yeah. in because yeah. I'm getting the itch and I just got to see what's going on and what can I do? What can I put out in the yard? So consequently, we're selling a lot of beautiful house plants. So it's funny. People put down Christmas and they're like, oh, I've got space. Yeah, what right. do I do with this space? I'm going to go buy houseplants. Houseplants. <laughs> yeah. uh, what else is going on? Yeah, so so seed, lots and lots, lots of seed. Lots of seed. People, I mean, just <laughs> buying big stacks of seed. They're buying their spring season yeah. seed, their, their uh, warm season summer seed. So they're excited. They're getting yeah. ready for that. Um, and we are, too. Yeah, so, we are. Oh, wildflower seeds. The other one, people are coming in oh, for. Oh, they good. It's time. Um, it's a great time to put yeah. out your wildflower yeah. seeds. So people have been, a lady, a customer showed me her picture from last year of her wildflower garden. Oh, Aren't they amazing? It was so easy. Gorgeous. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. Nonstop she, color. Yeah. She goes, I just followed Ken's directions. And <laughs> oh, this is what happened. Gosh. And it was beautiful. So I definitely recommend <laughs> if you got a spot for that, figure out how to do some yeah, of that. Definitely. But it's also when, so we've got our orders placed. We're trying to line up. Okay. When are the trucks coming in? What's right. going to come in? So I thought I would just share a few things that will be arriving. Oh, you're going to tease them. Sense. You tease. You, I that's what I love else. about you. You're such a tease. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to touch that one. <laughs> I was hoping you would. I'm not. <laughs> so we do have probably our first truck will start arriving. Two hopefully weeks. Next, yeah, maybe first next one week? will be next week. Oh, really? Oh, And good. we actually have some beautiful fruit trees coming in and some big fruit trees. Yeah. So sometimes it's hard to find those yeah, really big is. gallon size fruit trees. You can find a five gallon all day yeah. long. But, you know, a lot of people move here. They want instantaneous fruit trees. Yeah. They don't want to wait 10 years, you know, 
for the first plum that they can pull. So <laughs> we do have some bigger sizes fruit trees coming in. They should start producing, and they're all going to be 10, 15 gallon. I oh, think they're old, 20, old enough to produce this year. Gallon. Yeah. Nice. So, and then those we have, we're getting some apples. We're getting apricots, which last year apricots find them. were oh hard gosh. to find. So we're loading about on some apricots, the Chinese Mormon, which is a great one for here. It's the best one. Right. We're getting peaches. We're getting plums. We're getting some all-in-one almonds. Ooh, we couldn't find that one either. That's exciting. Finally, yeah. we're coming back online. This right. supply chain goofball mm-hmm. stuff is over. This is exciting. <laughs> I know. So that's fun because those were just really hard to find last year. And a few other kind of early blooming, some um, shrub showy almonds that don't produce the almond. It's just the flower. It's the prettiest Beautiful flower shrub. ever. Prettier than a cherry flower. Right. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we are getting some stuff starting to come in. And they'll that's be dormant. The so they're not oh, going to yeah. be leafed out and with plum. No, no, obviously, no. but you yeah. got to let the, the tropical folks, those Palm Spring <laughs> people know. They, they, we have four seasons here. Yeah. And we're bringing them in now before they, so they can acclimate. So they wake up oh, on yeah. our time. It's a great time to yeah. plant. Oh, yeah. Though, Best because time. then they wake up in their new home and just go, oh, look at me. Here I am. I'm yeah. going to root out. So good time to plant. Things that are coming in future. So this is maybe two, three weeks out. So the end of January, still... something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. Mm-hmm. So these are more, well, we'll be getting more fruit trees. We're getting some four in one apples. Oh, nice. Those are fun. Which are great for the smaller yards because then you're planting one tree with four varieties of apples that will pollinate each other. So you're always going to get fruit. So that's a a good one for that. But we're also getting some ornamental type flowering trees. So uh, we're getting the flamethrower again, which we had last year, but we only had a few. There's a red bud, flamethrower. I was going to say, it sounds bud. awkward on the airwaves, <laughs> but uh, yeah, flamethrower, red bud, there tree. I thought I'd put that in there. Yeah. So we got a few in last year, but they sold out really Instantly. quick. Yeah. So we're getting some more in. So that's a really cool one. It has uh, blooms with a kind of a purplish red flower yeah. to it. Um, and then the leaves, as the leaves come out, they kind of change color. So on one branch... You'll have uh, yellow, you'll have uh, orange, and then you'll have green leaves. Yeah. So it's kind of all in one branch. So as they pop out and mature, they kind of change color. Yeah. So really cool that way. Um, <clears throat> we're also getting the Ruby Falls red bud, which last year, there again, we could not get. get them. Not at all. So Ruby Falls is great for small yards. You're talking seven, eight feet max. <laughs> Has the pretty uh, fountain type branches that come down. Has a burgundy leaf to it. And of course, the flower is that real bright, bright, pink. bright, bright, pink. bright pink. Yeah. That's one. If you're into, if you're a true gardener where you like the artistic forms, you like topiaries and spirals and pom poms and flowing and weeping, Ruby Falls Redbud is the one because it has that flowy. Mm-hmm. look to it but it has the hardiness of our right. native red bud that grows wild here mm-hmm. yeah so, great tree uh spring snow crab apple yeah which i really like because it is a sterile crab apple so right. it's not going to produce any fruit you're not going to have to worry about cleaning that up or drawing animals into the yard with that gets about 15 feet tall has white blooms uh, big, and big white big white really, blooms. really big yeah and fragrant yeah very, very <laughs> fragrant. So that's a cool one coming in. We're also getting some Armstrong maples this year. Big ones, I hope. So we are. Good. So yes. the difference with an Armstrong maple, is there again, if you have a more, maybe a more narrow yard or a spot where you want something tall but not necessarily wide, Armstrong is great because it gets 30 to 40 feet tall, but it only gets about 12 feet wide yeah. max. Yeah. So if you've got a narrow spot that you want to throw something into that's beautiful, um, gives you the fall colors, kind of an orangey, red, yeah, gold. Bright. Yeah, yeah, bright. It's a bright, bright one. It's a classic maple leaf, mm-hmm. uh, tall and narrow. So, and yeah. for those folks that are watching the video vlog of this, it grows like this. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I just threw my hands on the form, the way the, the, the crown looks. Anyway, it's tall and not that wide. Great shade tree for patios, front mm-hmm. yards, driveways. It's not going to encroach and get right. in the way of things mm-hmm. and they're not invasive where they lift driveways and mm-hmm. lift patios they're not notorious for that like an elm elms cottonwoods they're notorious for willows that. willows oh my gosh uh so another great tree in that kind of the same line is the parkland pillar birch 
Oh, perfect. So another one that gets about 30 feet tall. And this one only gets six, max yeah. eight feet wide. Yeah. Uh, kind of a great replacement for those aspens. If, you have, if you've had problems with aspens in the past, this could be a good replacement for that. I think birch is hardier mm -hmm. than aspens. And they get that white bark faster, oh, sooner. Good. Whereas aspens need to be five or six years old before they're really old enough to be really bright white. Birch are like instantly, they grow white. Right. Uh, so anyway, the great choices. Thank you, Lisa, for things that are coming in this week and next, it looks like. So spring is here. It's very exciting. Our first garden class is coming up. Bad ships are, things are going. So spring orders are arriving weekly, if not every other few days. Okay, Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. Be right back. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Hi, Waters with the plants of the week and our Roman Beauty Roseberry. This Mediterranean beauty has graceful, arching branches that flow over rock walls, raised beds, or container's edge. A culinary herb often used in potpourri. Rugged, deer-resistive, evergreen, likes crummy soil, drought, and abuse. Now that's my kind of shrub for under $36. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love unusual, healthy herbs, they love to shop. Weaverly plants make you happier, and that local nurseries rock at Waters Garden Center. Hi, Waters with the plant of the week and our red cobweb hens and chicks. Tiny rosettes are covered with crazy cobweb-like hairs, then open and spread to make a dense, succulent ground cover. This drought-loving perennial flushes red in the spring with cactus pink flowers in the summer. Perfect for planting in rock gardens, super attractive in containers, and just $14. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love crazy new succulents, they love to shop. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. And we are back. One of the pleasures of having a an office studio right here at the Garden Center is when a guest comes to the Garden Center, John Murphy, a friend of mine, he's putting together a tremendous uh, benefit to the community, a, a community garden out in Chino Valley, and he's holding a gala. I said, John... We have to get you on the airwaves. We've got to promote this. People need to know about this stuff. You're doing such good stuff. So, John Murphy, welcome to the studio. Make 100 Healthy. Is that right? Yes, it is. Ken, thank you so much. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be here. And I couldn't think of a better place to talk about our gardening programs. And uh, the, the, the official title is the Prescott Food Forest at Bee Organic Farm. But the exciting part of this is that we're building a gardening discovery education center and we're looking to teach the next generation of gardeners how to garden uh, through our gardeners of destiny training program so that's a lot in there but it all comes down to <laughs> several mouthfuls we have a location a yeah. beautiful farm be organic farm in chino valley we've got a greenhouse that we have heated all winter long so we have a, a, a basically a learning teaching garden uh, all winter long and and we're uh, kicking it off with a big gala on Tuesday, January 17th at the club at Prescott Lakes. It's our Victory Garden Gala to benefit the Prescott Food Forest and our Gardeners of Destiny training program. Uh, I am so honored that you have uh, agreed to come and be our keynote speaker. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's not anybody in the area that is more passionate about gardening than you are. So thank you. It's doing great stuff. So you've got five acres yes. of gardens or gar potential gardens. Potential, yes. Uh, you were showing me some videos of Tri-City Prep. Yes. Yep. Like 30 kids out there? Well, it's actually Trinity Christian Trinity School. Trinity Christian School. I apologize. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, well, they're, can, they're welcome as well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get more kids involved. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so how did you get them? And what did they think? With the, were the kids? Or they're just volunteering? Well, yeah, they're to, volunteering. Uh, and they're a bunch of kids. So 
Uh, I've been speaking with uh, the folks at Trinity Christian School, uh, uh, Mr. Orr and, and uh, Aaron Rosberg, and I've been telling them about this program, and they said, we want to be involved. We want to support this. This is right up our alley. We're a service-based, Christian-based uh, school, and this is something we want to do. So when we got it going last week, uh, this is uh, last week we had 18 kids on one day for three hours, and the next day we had 22 kids. So 40 kids wow. gave 120 volunteer hours. We were able to turn the greenhouse over one of the beds, uh, and we are ready for our classes that start on January 21st, Winter Greenhouse Gardening, which we'll talk about. Yeah. But uh, the fact of the matter is it was so good to see these kids getting their hands in the dirt to learn about planting, replanting, compost. We even had some worms coming in from the worm nice. farm. Nice. And uh, they took an acre parcel and totally prepped it for the spring. So we're grateful. Thank you, kids, and thank you from everybody from Trinity. And that's what this is all about. Sure. It's not just one school. Any school organization or family that wants to learn about gardening or, or already knows and wants to share what they know, that's what our Prescott Food Forest that Be Organic Farm now, is all most about. most community gardens are, here's a square plot. I've set up a lot of these throughout different different around the community it's here's a plot you want to rent one for 50 bucks and grow your own stuff right we're not talking this no this is not we're really we're talking about learning how to grow like that's that, right and then on steroids bigger and then you're taking that food and do what do you do with all that so, well uh, the, the be organic folks have been giving away 85 percent of what they've grown for nice. years uh they give it to the food uh, the, the food pantries and the, the kitchen down in uh, Solid Rock Church and uh, uh, Community Pregnancy Center. So they give away most of their food. But that's because they are really limited on what they can grow because of help. So oh, we came sure. in and like you said, we have five acres. I mean, we're going to have berry farms. We have two other greenhouses. Uh, we have an apiary. We have... Uh, two cisterns out there with 5,000 gallons of water. It is turnkey. And so the community garden concept kind of evolved into the gardening discovery center. And as they say, if you teach, uh, if you give somebody a fish, they'll eat for the day. But if you teach them how to fish, right. and it's the same concept. We really want the kids and, and really adults of all ages to learn how to grow food. It's good for your mental wellness it's good for your physical strength and it's good to know because it's a life skill that's kind of gone away yeah. and we know that you know wh what we know is we, we can't for sure know that we'll always have food from the uh, traditional distribution system so how do people get involved with this well there's several ways first of all i want to invite everyone in your audience that it loves gardening to come to the event sure to january 17th tuesday sure. uh january 17th from five to nine at the club at prescott lakes we've got a great evening we have great entertainment with kenny james and michael soma and rick jordan and we have food stations and we're going to have a raffle a silent auction we have so many great uh gifts and contributions from the local businesses and by the way we're still looking for some so you can get in touch uh with our prescottfoodforest.com gotcha. if you, uh, tickets you can get on if you want to volunteer there's a volunteer schedule so our main point of uh of contact is prescottfoodforest.com and you can call me directly even uh at uh, 908-309-7046 you can get the tickets online and there's a discount if you buy get a table so oh, awesome. and thank water one Center. more time just for those that maybe were driving pull over now <laughs> and john's phone number is 908 309 Seven zero four six or Prescott Food Forest. Prescott Food Forest dot com. You can That's get great. tickets right online. You'll get the everything will be automated. So get involved in the event. That's, That's going right. to raise money. So we can go get soils and foods. I'm already talking to growers. Like Monrovia just committed like six or more fruit trees, 
berries, that's amazing. grapes, Thank and then you. Lisa and I will match that. So wow. we'll get that that's going perfect. on. The and now we can teach folks well, how to grow trees, how well, to prune. Yeah. Um, well, we those. have 50 trees out there already, yeah. and some need to be replaced. But yeah. yeah, this is just a one-stop gardening education center. And we just are so excited to teach people how to grow food. And then once they learn how they become a gardening guru and teach others. So we're one of the benefits of having this event is we've gotten so many people that want to volunteer either individually as family so I welcome anyone that wants to come up and give three or four hours a week you're more than welcome to this is on a private property that's why it's not really a community garden anymore but it is a garden for the community and it's for our community to come together in fellowship and to help out those less fortunate, but also to give them good nutritional food to all of our citizens in the area. So do you meet every Saturday or how, how, how do you know how often do, do you have a, a set? Well, right now we have crews going up on Wednesdays and Fridays Gotcha. and we're going to have a weekend crew, but, and thank you for reminding me, I'd like to invite the third thing is if you want to really learn everything about the ecosystem of growing food, please join up for our winter greenhouse gardening class uh, eight weeks in a row from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. starting January 21st. Oh, nice. And it's an eight-week class. It's good for families, good for groups, individuals. Uh, If you, there's a slight cost for it, but we are giving away, if you want to give time, we'll give you uh, credit for that. Gotcha. And, so, and as kids, maybe poor kids, if they, if they do you have scholarship money? We have scholarship help, money. Make sure kids can get in there. Or our, event, have, our event is to raise money perfect. so that anybody that wants nice. to learn how to grow food, if financing is a problem, we don't want that to be a barrier. Yeah, in fact, when you give your time, we're going to give you food. Yeah, nice. And so it's really good. So you got 45 seconds. Just wrap it up and tell people where, when, how. One last shot. It's all yours. Well, Ken, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to invite everybody again, January 17th from 5 to 9 at the Club at Prescott Lakes. It's our Victory Garden charity gala. We've got great entertainment, great uh, uh, talent, which is, of course, yourself. You can get tickets at prescottfoodforest.com or call me directly at 908 309 7046. If you want to volunteer, go to prescottfoodforest.com and we're looking forward to an amazing event. And thank you for all your support. I you can't believe over the years. you've already got so many volunteers going. It's good uh, stuff. Mark and Jenny out there have been doing great work for years, but to have volunteers help and kind of shore them up, it's going to be a game changer so ken lane the mountain gardener here with john murphy and make 100 healthy and the uh, victory garden gala coming up january 17th be right back after this you're listening to local garden expert ken lane the owner of waters garden center he can be found throughout the week at waters garden center located in prescott 1815 iron springs road thanks for tuning in to the mountain gardener as the days get longer and brighter, houseplants can struggle and scorch, but we have the solution. At Waters, we've organized our houseplants from A to Z for the brightest of sunny locations, many even bloom. With experts that know plants and how to make them grow. Shipments of the freshest houseplants in town have just arrived from A to Z and ready for a bright new home. Waters Garden Center, where people who love bright green houseplants, they love to shop. Found in Prescott. We believe dogs make shopping more fun. So bring your dog to Waters Garden Center. Not everyone can grow wildflowers, but we'll make sure you're not one of them. At Waters, we know which wildflowers sprout, thrive, and bloom with success. We're wild about wildflowers with many of our own Arizona blends. Like our Arizona native mix, butterfly and hummingbird mixes, and all are big, bold, and beautiful. At Waters, we know wildflowers, and winter's a season to spread new seed. Waters Garden Center, where people who love their flowers wild, they love to shop for seed. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. So it is official. Uh, spring is kind of in the air. So so we're back from vacation, a little holiday. So I gave uh, uh, Christmas through New Year's the staff off. We closed the store down. It's one of the best things I've ever done over the years is, is uh, take a break, rest, enjoy the family, the time, the holidays. 
And so we come back and we're kind of, it's hard to get back in that rhythm going, okay, we took a few days, we took a week off and now we got to go full on. So January is a light month for us here at the garden center and in the gardens. Me, basically you're still baking cookies sipping tea and looking out the windows going, when does spring get here? There's some pent up demand. Uh, gardeners, they've been stuck inside since November one. We had that, uh, it got cold early. So there's, there's extra gardeners are ready to be outdoors and garden. They're wanting to go. And so we had our first garden class. That's kind of our cue. We started, uh, it's coming up this weekend, uh, January 14th, Saturday. It's the first one. It's healthy, happy houseplants. How do you grow houseplants? Where do you grow them? How's the best way from African violets to pothos to monsteras to whatever we got? So, so we load up the garden center with houseplants just for this. And so on the soils and the foods, and we'll go over all those details. But a big shout out to two people, uh, Mackenzie, my daughter, uh, took the first class. Now she's kind of our buyer. She goes down to the farm. If ever you need a big specimen, talk to her. She'll go down and pick you one or hand pick whatever. So she's she, she's in the she's in the know of what's at the farms. When are they coming? How what's this, the rhythm? And so every week she gets a, a load of of houseplants. And and she's a house plant nerd. She's a tropical plant nerd. And Sherry is her right-hand person. Sherry's actually our, our go-to guru. Uh, they, those two gals decided, hey, can I teach the first class? And I went, great. I, we've got like 20 classes scheduled in the first one's house plants. Next week, uh, every Saturday at 930. Next week, it's on what is it? Uh, uh, landscape style. How do you landscape design? And the last class is why January is the best month to plant wallflowers. So it's kind of the first start. It goes right through spring till May. We've got a class every Saturday. I was worried about doing them all myself. That's a lot. 20 classes all by yourself. Well, the team has started to already take pieces of it. We'll have some guest speakers come in. So thank you, Mackenzie. Thank you, Sherry, for, for taking that first one. You guys are, are rocking it. We'll have them every week in the in the back greenhouse. The first one was inside the store. Uh, there's room. You're surrounded by all the house plants. Next week, we'll have it up in the greenhouse. So we'll crank the heaters up, and it'll be comfortable. Uh, bring an extra layer just in case. And I, I will teach that one on how to, what are the ratios? Where do you put evergreens. There's certain places. How do you cut the wind? Privacy, all those different topics. We'll cover how to design. Just more technical stuff. A lot of handouts on that one. So uh, that one will be at 930. Come. If you if you want to know what the classes are, uh, go to watersgardencenter.com. And there's a big old green, there's a big class button right there. You can't miss it. If you're looking, you can find it. Uh, or type in Google, Waters Garden Center spring classes 23 or whatever we've been doing this for decades um, it's it's one of our strengths uh, our one of our core philosophies are this is company values bottom line we 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 exist at waters garden center so that people that includes our people our staff the community our customers uh, our plants and our community will thrive that's part of the goal. And so a garden class is perfect for that. We'll teach you how to garden with plants. Gardeners like hanging out with each other. It's a community gathering place. It just fits all of our core, core, core values. And so we've been doing this for 20, 30. I've been here 30 years. Longer than that. So the garden classes, take a look. They're free. They're starting up. But thank, going back to thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Mackenzie, for taking the first one. I love working with you, you all. You make you make coming to work fun every week. What Ken Lane and the Mountain Gardener here at Waters Garden Center. This is where I hang out throughout the week. Come say hi. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to the Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in. Did you know that plants can help you sleep better naturally? 
At Waters Garden Center, we have beautiful houseplants that not only look great, they clean the air we breathe. Get this. Some plants can actually produce oxygen at night and even take mold spores out of the air, making for less tossing and turning and more beauty sleep. Don't lose sleep. Rise and shine with unique, gorgeous houseplants for your best rest yet at Waters Garden Center. Sweet dreams. If you enjoy this show and would like to hear more, please subscribe to The Mountain Gardener wherever you like to listen to podcasts. And if you'd like even more garden tips, tricks, and helpful advice, please check out my website at watersgardencenter.com for classes, videos, and more, or my online garden center at top10plants.com. Throughout the week, Lisa and I can be found here at Waters Garden Center in Prescott.